for, for joining us here to announce another big London show. Not so long since we were uh, back at the Royal Albert Hall, which went extremely well with Daniel producing uh, a, a, an eye-catching performance there. And now at Wembley as well, another great London show and another big one for the fans, Frank. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. It certainly is. Um, as John just said, it was an eye-catching performance. It was a spectacular knockout. And uh, all credit to Daniel. That was in his 10th bite. And he's going from strength to strength. And we want to keep him busy this year, as we said, after the uh, show. And uh, that's what we're here for today, to announce his next fight. I got the impression, Frank, that the, the reception that Daniel got at the Royal Albert Fort Hall. I think uh, I think he certainly enjoyed it. And I mean, it was one of the, it was it was a sign that the British public are really starting to latch on to the big lad. They certainly are, and uh, there's no doubt about that. It was very warmly received. Um, it was a great night's boxing. Now I think everybody enjoyed the show um, from the public perspective, and uh, you know the, the public are behind Daniel. And it's our job now to just keep making sure that we're moving him in the right direction, stepping him up each. Tommy fights, and that's what we're doing in his next fight against Richard Larty. Yeah, and Colin, Colin Hart was telling me that uh, Frank Bruno it was his 22nd fight when he first topped the bill at, uh, at Wembley. But Lennox was in his 15th fight when he first topped the bill at Wembley. And now here's Daniel topping the bill at this stage of his career. Well, you know, he's, they're, they're big names and big acts to follow, but um, and, and, and huge footsteps. But he's a big man, he's got a big punch. Uh, I think he boxed a bit and I think he showed that, albeit it's only a couple of rounds, but I thought he showed more variety in his punches. And, uh, you know, he's, a, he's a definitely a star in the making and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't say it lightly, the fact we're making him the main event there, sells you that with the confidence we've got in the future for him moving forward. And potentially building towards a showdown with uh, the other big prospect on the books. Nathan Gorman, that's, uh, it's all moving towards that. Touch wood. Well, everybody keeps talking about it, and it's a fight that no doubt will happen this year, at the end of this year. Obviously, the two guys have got to keep winning, keep fighting regularly. Nathan's fighting on Saturday at Leicester, in Leicester, I should say. Um, unfortunately, he's lost two opponents over the last few days, so or the last week. He's been very, very frustrated about it, but hopefully he'll put in a good performance against his replacement opponent, which will be announced uh, today, I think. And then uh, it's the fights I say that we're looking for. Well, to. well, an excellent undercard as well on this uh, Wembley bill, which is going to be going on the 27th of April, going to be shown live on BT Sports. And uh, some of the guys who are involved in the promotion are up here alongside us. Now, let's start off, Frank, with uh, Zach Chelly against Jimmy Smith. They could southern area title and sometimes i mean i was talking to some of the lads here earlier on sometimes the, the british title fights the commonwealth title fights southern area fights sometimes you get the best confrontations and the best fights at this sort of level well we've had some great fights haven't we over the last few years with the uh, on the undercards we look to make um, even matches and basically see see if our guys are, are up to the up to it to move forward and move on to the bigger stage you know, up to now zach's done Brilliantly, he's done everything that's asked of him, um, and this is his reward. He's fighting a very early stage, six fights, fighting for the Southern Area title. I mean, if you, I think you think back over the years, Colin had mentioned to you earlier about um, Frank Bruno and so forth and other fighters. They never fought for Southern Area titles in their sixth fight. They weren't having ten round contests. They'd probably be having their, you know, maybe six rounds at the most. So he's done extremely well. His dad, his dad over there, you know. Um, He's, uh, he's got such massive confidence in his boy, and I know his boy's got a lot of confidence in himself. And this is a tough fight for him. You know, Jimmy's not, and I'll, I keep, I always use that phrase, he's not coming to make up the numbers. You know, I think it's going to have a decent little fight here after two of them. Well, Jimmy, in his ninth professional fight, right, Jimmy? Yeah. Seven wins there from Slough. Just shove the microphone in front of you and tell us what you think of what you've seen of Zach so far, but first tell us what, you, what your thoughts are about getting back at Cell uh, or being fighting at Wembley, which has such an amazing tradition in boxing. Oh, it's a brilliant opportunity, the opportunity doesn't come up every day of the week. Uh, I got a call back in January and uh, I jumped at the chance. It's not every day, chances like this come around the 5th Southern Area titles. So, 
and it's uh, you know we talked there about a little bit about Zach and everything he's done so far, but this is an amazing opportunity for you. Yeah, definitely, definitely all the hard work's paid off. What about uh, what about Zach? Because you you must have seen some of his fights. You must have watched a little bit of the footage from the TV coverage. What do you reckon? Yeah, I've seen Zach quite a few times. He's a good boxer, very good talent. He's a uh, he's got where he's got to, and uh, yeah, I think he's a decent fighter. But you've looked at him and you believe you'll have seen things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Are you going to share it with us? Uh, I'll keep cards close to the chest. <laughs> what would it mean to you as, as, a, as a fighter, as a, as a young professional, if you were to win this one? It would mean, it mean everything to me. Tell us a bit about how, just a little bit more about yourself, how you got into boxing, where you've come from to get to this point. I started boxing when I was about six, in gyms and that, and I uh, had the uh, um, first few fights at Snell. Been all over real bit for Repton, West Ham. So I've had my fair share of clubs. And uh, yeah, I turned pro when I was 23. I had to see the amateur game. So. And any thoughts about appearing and performing in front of the television cameras? No, I'm just no, looking forward to that. To, uh, to be on the BT spot. Now, Zach, you uh, you love the uh, you love the the limelight, don't you? You've, uh, you? You're not a, a shy and retiring man. No, no, I love I love uh, having the attention. It's great, especially when you get to prove yourself. That's what I aim to do. Six fights undefeated so yeah. far. How happy are you with the way things have gone to this point? Yeah, I'm really grateful to have the uh, six fights and uh, not not six easy fights. Some of the fights were pretty good sure. tough fights. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty grateful to be in this position now despite the seven year title. What do you regard as your best performance on that record so far? Uma, the win there maybe? Yeah, I'd say the, the fight with Uma has showed that I'm, I'm able to go the eight rounds and I'm able to put a man down and finish off, uh, finish off strong. And this time it's going to be ten rounds for the first time for the area title. What sort of a difference might that make? Well, I am training for the ten rounds and I know Jim Smith is a durable opponent. I've seen a couple of fights, eight wins. Uh, eight fights, seven wins, so pretty good record. And I am training for 10 rounds, but I'm also training for less than 10 rounds, you know, you never know. Do you think you might finish in before that time? You never know, yeah. Train for both. Tell us what sort of a fight we can expect. You say you've looked at him, what sort of a fighter have you have you seen? What Describe what I you... see he's a very durable opponent. He likes to come forward. That's also what I've seen of him so far. And yeah, I'm going to be hopefully on the night I'll just show some of my skill. I like to show people that I am a, a boxer as well as a, a fighter. Are you still uh, involved in your studies as well? Yes, uh, I got two assignments due on Monday and an exam on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're trying to be a full time boxer at the same time, be a full time student? Uh, yeah, trying to be both. It works, I've been doing it all my life. You're a student and I'm, and I'm boxer. Used to, <laughs> student boxer, always learning. How, is that, how, how does that go down with all your, your, your fellow students? Do they, are they aware of what you do? When I tell them I'm a boxer, they, don't, they never think professional boxer. They all think, oh, it's just as a hobby. But then they see me on TV and then they start realising how do I do it. It's just because I don't go out and it's not social. Life. He's, a, he's, a, he's a, a, a marketable fellow, Zach, isn't he, Frank? I mean, he's, uh, he's somebody who you must have enjoyed working with to this point. Yeah, I have, you know. Uh, he's been manager over there, Joe Paul. He's done a great job with him. And we have enjoyed it. There's been a few, yeah, there was a couple of problems last year, but we're all over those. And let's and say the bottom line is now is that he's got to move, you know, he's got to move. And moving to a southern area title means that every fight after that is a step up, provided he beats Jimmy. And, you know, Jimmy, I'm sure, has got other ideas on that, as far as that's concerned. So we will certainly find out at when. Now, alongside Zach, Archie Sharp comes from hereabouts. 23 years old, undefeated in 14, and a first appearance on the back of that terrific win against Leon Woodstock, and he really well, did look good that he, night. He, he absolutely looked good. He went into Leon, Leon's backyard and went out and you know done the business and come back with a with a prize. He's you know he he, he done fantastically well, and uh, it's it's quite a, a, a lively division at the moment. Super bad of, yeah, it certainly is one of our best divisions, and uh, again we've got. Um, Mr. Bowen's fighting on Saturday, so we've got we've got um, him defending his title, and I'm sure sometime this year that's a fight that's going to be made, and I'm sure that you know Archie's certainly got the he's got the goods to go there and 
and you know, who knows who's going to win these fights. You know, the best are going to be fighting the best, but at the end of the day, um, winners or losers, we're going to stick with them because they are, they're all exciting and good quality young fighters. Archie, looking forward to being on this Wembley bill. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, I was supposed to be out at Royal Albert Hall. Unfortunately, I got injured and it was a minor setback. But now I'm back and looking forward to getting, um, getting back in the ring and keeping active. What was the injury that kept you out of the Albert Hall? I won't go into in too much details, but unfortunately, it kept me out of the gym for about three to four weeks. Um, so I had no sparring, no sort of training, but now I'm back and I'm getting there, so... And you certainly will be, having <coughs> one eye very much on Sam Burney's performance in, in Leicester on Saturday night. Yeah, 100%. Um, I was saying to a few people today, Sam Burney's a great fighter. I'm a great fighter, so the fight's going to happen at some point. Um, and we'll just see. Like I say, I'll get active, we'll get back in the ring, and I'll look for some big fights after that. How much did you surprise yourself with the quality of your performance against Leon Woodstock? Because I think a few people who maybe maybe haven't seen so much of you are thinking, oh, maybe Leon's the, the guy who's going to thrive off home support and he's going to be just a bit too charged up and a bit too much for him. But in the end, there was only one winner. You were, you were, you were the boss pretty much from the outset. I believe in my ability. Um, I've been doing this game since I was seven years old. I boxed all around the world. Um, as a young kid, so going up to Leicester didn't bother me at all. My fans come with me, we had a great support up there. And uh, I knew what I was able to do and I'd done it, so it's good. And coming up through the ranks, I mean, you must have been aware of Bowen. Did you always think that at some point you and Sam were going to be meeting? 100%. Bowen's a great fighter. He's been in the mix for years um, as a great fighter. So as, as an amateur, and now he's doing it as a pro. Same as me, I was doing it as an amateur, and now I'm doing it as a pro. So the, like I say, the fight's going to happen. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what, this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to box great fighters. And fighting at Wembley, you'll have a lot of, uh, a lot of hometown support as well, I'm sure. And uh, you'll be looking forward to the prospect of being alongside so many, you know, sort of emerging stars, including Danny. Yeah, 100%. It's a great card. And um, I thank Frank and MTK and everyone else who's you know, put me on the show. Um, all the support, everyone's interested, everyone's looking forward to it. And it's going to be a great night of boxing. And we look forward to seeing you. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Sonny Edwards, undefeated in 10 fights, super flyweight from Croydon, going to be defending his WBO European title and somebody I know, Frank, of whom you, you think an awful lot. He's a talented lad. He is, and I've got high expectations of him. He's got high expectations of himself, but he's a, he's a quality fighter. Great, you know, I think, he's, I think he's got the ability to go all the way. And uh, this is another step on the ladder for him when he's defending his title. And uh, we're, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing him back in the ring again. What do you see as being his special ability? I mean, he's a, he's a sparky character, as we'll hear in a minute, but uh, as a fighter, what do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, he's a cheeky chappy, but um, <laughs> inside the ring, he does the business, doesn't he? He's a really, he's a good boxer, he's got a good boxing brain. And, and uh, you know, and I like, I, as much as we like seeing punchers and boxers, but he's got a great boxing brain. And, and, I, and I quite enjoy watching him fight. Cheeky chappy. Do you, uh, do you, do you recognise that? Well, it makes a good change. Um, I didn't get introduced as Charlie for the first time. Um, but now, yeah, I carry my, my personality into the ring with me. I think even with my, my style, my flair. Um, but I just love the game. I, I study it. I'm, I'm in the gym all the time. I'm surrounded by my best friends are boxers. Um, I don't see me doing anything else. I'm 14 years deep in, in this game. Um, I'm lucky to have either watched or, or shared shows as an amateur with every single person on this table, except you two. Um, but yeah, so I, I've been around, I've been around the block, won national titles, um, and I'm just looking to sort of push on. I think I've, I've, I've built the momentum and I've finally earned my shot to be sitting at these sort of tables. Um, I was under no illusion when I first turned pro. I had a good amateur background, but I didn't do nothing spectacular. I didn't, you know, the European World Medals, Olympics. So I weren't expecting to get boom, boom, TV spot, TV spot. I weren't expecting that. I did my graph on the small wall shows, went from the NTK shows, then then been at the bottom of the undercards. I closed the door at the front of Davies door. I, was, I booked at about half twelve the night. But it was all experience and I enjoyed it and I was so grateful to be on the platform so that now when my chances have come in, I, I feel like not only have I earned them, but I deserve them. Ten fights undefeated. You, you sound from the way you're speaking there as though you, you're enjoying very much the professional sport. You're enjoying fighting for money. Well, yeah, it's showtime, isn't it? Um, that's, that's, my, that's my nickname. Um, 
I love the whole entertainment um, aspect of the sport. I love the back and forth. I love the sort of because I know what gets me excited. So I'm not just a boxer. I'm a boxing fan. I'm a big boxing fan. I'm, you've probably seen me at most of the shows. Yeah. Um, all the BT shows I can get down to. The small ball shows up, up in Yorkshire now, where I'm based. Um, the other shows. Okay, we don't talk about them. But the other shows. We don't, uh, talk, about we don't talk about them. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm around. And I, I love the sport. And I feel like that. That shows to, to, to the more people getting to know me. Yeah, some people might think I'm a bit arrogant, cocky out there, and, and a bit outspoken. But um, like it up. Well, I've started. Yeah, I've, I've started showing that. You know, I mean, my last two fights, they were risky opponents. Ryan Farag, European champion, probably European champion, at the weight above. I only lost to Burnett, Haskins, and, and a European French champion. I beat him comfortably. A headline. Box Nation. Um, so then, I, my Granada's fight was. I took a four and a half weeks notice. Um, even my management were like, "Do you know what I mean? If you just want to, you know, try and get an easier one." I was like, "No, I want a proper fight. I want a fight that will make people stand up and recognise." And at first, we took Charlie Hoy, who's recently signed to MTK. I don't know what happened with that. Twenty-four hours later, it wasn't on the table. And then I got off of Granada's and. Granados had a hell of a fight against Jamie Conlon. Amazing fight. A hell of a fight. Fighting year, I believe. Um, and also went on to beat Pesites, who, who just drew for the world title against Donny Niet. So it was, it was a good, tough Mexican. And I felt like I handled my business, even when in the second round I rocked the two ligaments when I got put down. So I felt like I, I ticked another box that more than just my box, and I've got heart and, and, and drive and ambition. You're students of the sports, aren't you? You love it. Nobody's going to throw anything unexpected at you. Well, um, you never know. I lost as an amateur, I can lose as a pro, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not oblivious to that fact. I don't sit on this cloud believing my hype. I know that every, every dog can have its day and, and, and vice versa. But I know for an absolute fact that on my day, on my best, with right preparation, I can give any boxer a similar weight to me. Um, I won't pull out that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't, I know to the best of my ability that on my day I can, I can mix it with anyone and that's why I've been used as a uh, Burnett sparring partner, I've been flown out to Ukraine twice, they tried to get me for the third time but I was fighting Granados um, in Ukraine, just the WBA world champion Dele Kayan. I'm mixing it and obviously now my brother's WBC world champion and my punch is editing, so. Um, Good stuff, well lovely, lovely to hear from you and we wish you well. Uh, Whoever you're going to be fighting, we're not sure of the opponent yet at this stage. Yeah. Uh, but that will be announced you know, sometime soon, defending the yeah. WBO European title. Yeah. Yeah. Now, also on the bill, tremendous uh, title fight. This guy alongside me, Lerone Richards, undefeated in 11 fights, up against Tommy Langford, who's had 24 fights, three defeats, but yeah. he's, he's moving up to super middleweight. And again, it's one of those fights which it's, a, it's, it's, he won't believe it and won't, certainly won't agree, but a lot of people would say this is a, a pick and fight. It's that sort of contest. Yeah, everybody's got opinion about fights, and I'm quite sure Lerone won't think that. You know, he's, he's, on a, he's undefeated, he's done everything you can ask of him. You know, Tommy's coming up, as you say, and wait to fight him. Tommy's got a great pedigree, he's been there and done it, but, you know, this is the, again, this is the, the fight that Lerone needs at this stage of the game. You know, he wants to move on to into bigger and better um, fights and better opposition. This is he's a, this is the guy he's got to beat. He's doing it very soon in his career, but he, everyone's got faith in his ability, so that's why the match is made. We'll hear from Lerone in, in a moment, but it, obviously for Tommy, who unfortunately can't be with us today, um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for him to get back to title level. This is going to be for the Commonwealth title, and he pushed Jason Wellborn very close twice. He had that defeat against Kurt today. He's going back, but he's a, he's a good technician, isn't he? He's a very smart box. You know, Tom Cheney, his trainer, has done a, does a has done a great job with him. But um, so is Lerone. He's a great. You know, he's a very very good fighter, a very good boxer. He's got a great trainer as well. So I think we you know we're going for a, a little special fight here between the two of them. Good fight indeed. Lerone, yeah. up here on the uh, on the on the dais for the first time, and with your photograph up there on the uh, on the on the fight poster. Yeah. Great uh, great opportunity for you, isn't it? Commonwealth mm -hmm. title at stake. Um, yeah, um, great opportunity. It's about time I'm on these um, billboards now. Um, 
I can't wait um, to the 27th of April to showcase my skills. 11 fights undefeated. What do you regard as your principal assets as a boxer? Um, you know, I can do it all. I'm a uh, fight of all terrain. I can fight um, close range, mid range, and I can box very, very well. I'm very intelligent in that ring. Um, I believe it's a sweet science boxing, and that's what I bring to the table. You prefer to look at it that way than going in there and going toe to toe as a slugger? Uh, don't get me wrong, everyone can do that. Um, everyone in this ring can have a fight. Um, but I box, I box really smart. I fight very smart. And um, like I said, I will show everyone on the night what I'm all about. Coming through, you, you're 11 fights undefeated now and obviously targeting the top. Yeah. But as a, as a young lad watching boxing, who were the people who you admired? Uh, I watched a lot of Colonel Whitaker, Lennox Lewis, uh, James Tony, uh, Mike McCallum. Good names. Yeah. Good names. <laughs> and, uh, and who would you put yourself alongside most, hopefully? Who would you like to be compared with? Uh, good question. <laughs> well, we'll go back to that one. You can, you can keep that one in the back of your mind. What about uh, what about Tommy Langford? I mean, we were talking earlier. This is a great fight for you and a great opportunity, but it's it's not an easy one by any means. It's not an easy fight at all. Tommy Langford, um, obviously, he's moved up in weight. He's got the frame to move up to super middleweight. He's quite a big guy. Uh, very very good boxer. Very intelligent like myself. So it's going to be a good good fight. You expecting it to be a tight one? Um, it's as easy as how I want to make it. Um, this fight. Uh, I, as I, like I said, I can box, um, I can fight as well, so uh, it would be a good night of boxing. You obviously think you're going to do it, but where does your, where's your superiority lie? How do you think you're going to take them out? Uh, I would like to say, like I say, I, uh, I bring sweet science to the table. Um, I box really intelligently, and people under, underestimate my power. I can hit very, very hard, and um, if I do rock Tommy Lanford, I will finish. A chance of a chance of a title, a Commonwealth title, in only your twelfth fight. I mean, yeah. that's a, this is a chance to make a statement. It is. Um, I think um, it's the right time. Um, right time for me. I've been looking for a big fight for such a long time. I've been very patient. Um, I've been very, very, very patient, and now I've got my opportunity. No excuses now. Serious business. And I know I've asked it to the other guys, but I'm going to ask you as well about fighting. Here in London, at Wembley, in front oh, yeah. of plenty of fans, how's that going to feel? Oh, it's going to feel great. Um, I visualised it uh, coming out, just, uh, just enjoying the atmosphere, uh, and I'm just demonstrating my skills. Just can't wait. Maybe, maybe Tommy Langford's watching somewhere right now. He His is. friends will be. Probably. What sort of message have you got for him? Um, I've really got a message for him. Um, just good luck in your preparation and. Um, I'll see you on fight night. And we'll see you on the night. Absolutely. Which is how it should be, Frank. It's right. uh, got bring his A game. He's, he's, I know Lerone's bringing his. So we're going to get a, a good quality fight. On paper, it's a, it's a terrific sort of principle undercard fight. It is. It is. Now then, let's uh, concentrate on the big lad, <laughs> Daniel Dubois. First of all, the performance, Daniel, at the Royal Albert Hall. I had a quick word with you earlier on. I mean, the reception from the crowd was fantastic. They loved you, didn't they? Yeah. yeah it was very, how very good nice. did how good did that feel? Good, you know, a bit unexpected, but when when the war went up and the crowd, it's a very good feeling and uh, adrenaline rush and just a surge of energy. So I enjoyed it. Do you get the impression that people are really now beginning to recognise you, and all the hard work is beginning to reap a reward? Well, yeah, yeah, um, definitely understanding uh, boxing. And you know, professional boxing, you know, the difference between amateur and pro professional boxing and what all the work was for in the amateur gyms and amateur clubs I've, I've been to. So, yeah, it's, um, it's amazing really, but I, I enjoyed it. And after the frustration of having to go the distance against Kevin Johnson to then go in against Kojanu, who's a, a world, former world title challenger, big man, known to be durable, to put him away inside two rounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just, before the fight, I was focused on, I knew I was going to um, um, find the knockout, you know, as soon as the opportunity was, I just, I knew I was going to take him out, so, 
it wasn't a real surprise for me, but um, it was good to do it in front of a, a great venue and a good crowd at the Royal Ball. It was a brilliant finish, Frank. When he when he got the opportunity, he put him away spectacularly. I think the shot was good. What I, what I thought was good as well with the body shots he was throwing. Threw some good body shots in that fight and made him drop his hand. So he you know, was an excellent, excellent finish, as you said. Um, you know, he went the distance with Parker. What was that? That 18, yeah. 19 months ago, whatever it was, uh, for a world title. So he's he's you know that's a big step up at this stage of his career, and I'm I'm really pleased with it. So we're going to be fighting Richard Larty, who's another big man, right. Sa same sort of stature as you. He's ranked number fourteen, is he? With the WBO he's ranked Frank? number fourteen, so he's fighting a world ranked fighter, um, and he is a big man. He's a he's a he is a big guy, six five, uh, fourteen and one. So it's uh, you know this is another big step up for Daniel. Have you had a chance to see him at all, Daniel, or is it a case of learning on the night? Yeah, yeah, I've seen a few videos and. He's like any other fighter, he's going to have two arms, he's going to come out and he's going to be throwing punches, you know, to, to win. And I'm, and I'm looking forward to the challenge he brings and I uh, know preparation and when I'm prepared and I'm in the gym, I'll be in the gym working hard and I'll definitely uh, get the victory and perform on the night. He has that knockout record, doesn't he? He's obviously a big puncher in his own right. Um, to be honest, I mean, uh, regardless of that, um, I know what I know what I'm gonna do on the night and um, just how I'm 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 gonna perform and I'm just gonna, you know, get the victory. And what's it like topping the bill or knowing that you're gonna to be topping the bill at Wembley and following in the footsteps as you did at the Royal Albert Hall, you're following sort of great guys of the past like Lennox, like Frank Bruno, who've who've been big stars, who've who've topped the bill at the Wembley. How does it how does it feel to be knowing you're top of the bill? Um it feels good, you know, it feels, you know, the work in, you know, you know, starting from such a young age, so all of that I've done bef behind me, my past behind me is, is a testament to where I am now, and that's helped me get to where I am now at this stage of my career, so. Ed education, that's what yeah. absolutely. How, f how far away, Frank, do you think Daniel is now? I know he's got to win this one, but how far away from getting right into the big league you know this year again is about <coughs> excuse me is about um look first of all it's about who punches hardest to be world champion yeah he'd be up there with everybody it's about getting more experience it's about you know every every round you get is more experience we know he can bang i think you know, by, you know we want to get the fight on him and nathan this year and then i think after that whoever wins that fight comes through that fight and will be knocking on the door. Nathan's making big noises about that one. He wants it. You want it as well? Oh, definitely. I want to, I want to just, you know, you know, if, it's, if there's a British title on the line, if not, it doesn't matter. I just want to be the, be the number one, really. How much do you get fed up of hearing the name Nathan Gorman and people saying, is he going to fight him? When's he going to fight him? What's going to happen? It's good, you know. It's good they're building a the fight and the fight's getting bigger and bigger. And I've just got to keep winning, really. He's going to be watching. He's going to be fighting at the weekend, but he'll be watching this now. Have you got uh, anything you want to say to Nathan Gorman? Are you ready for him? I know I'm ready for him, but you know, where uh, there's nothing really to say to him. I know I'm ready. And you'll be looking to make a statement against Richard Larty before that. Yeah, definitely. Come in, bro. I'll, I'll be ready on, and you know, get through this one. And you know, I'm ready for a challenge. I'm ready for challenges in my career, so. I welcome all. It's brilliant that the heavyweight division is so strong at the moment, Frank, and particularly with the uh, with the British participation in that. Well, you know, British heavyweights now they're coming on like buses, aren't they? You know, when you think for the years when we were certainly when I was younger, which is a long, long time ago, but they weren't that many around. Now uh, we're blessed with them. We've got great, you know, great youngsters coming through, uh, and it's. Uh, you know, it's an exciting time for British boxing, certainly an exciting time for heavyweight boxing in Britain. So April the 27th, Wembley Arena, that's when it's going to be happening. Yeah. And uh, we we look forward to another terrific show, hopefully. We do, it will be a terrific show because these guys are all great talents. They're all great youngsters. This is what it's all about. This is building the next generation of fighters. These are the guys that are going to be in the next 18 months and be up there, big names. 
When it comes through, that's what they've got to get. They've got the platform here to go and be the next stars of British boxing. And one of, boxing. And one of the uh, one of the guys here, one of the media guys earlier on, was asking me about the importance that big shows, big fights, are actually here.